is that yesterday for our little uh birthday dinner you know mine and the brunette's um birthday joined up together well it's always this month anyway so we we um we decided to go to the Hawksmoor and have a nice little steak dinner for ourselves to kind of celebrate uh, you know um, celebrate your birthday vibes as i mentioned before i'm not really the biggest birthday celebration person i tend to veer more towards the side of like you know the older you get the less you should be making a show of it i think it's a bit embarrassing when you just you know making such a big deal out of your birthday um uh what you call it guilt tripping people into coming to your shindigs um pestering people with facebook invites with text messages i just find it a little bit a little bit distasteful i'm not really the biggest fan of it i think it's just maybe keep your counsel don't be a dickhead let people um let people decide if they want to acknowledge your birthday or not and then go from there but as, as it's your own birthday you're more within your you're more you're more within your you're well within your rights to kind of you know decide to kind of buy a big bottle of whiskey some champagne and whatever and give yourself a toast now don't toast yourself online right don't post a picture of yourself drinking on your own on your birthday online because that looks incredibly sad right if you're just seeking for sympathy then fair enough that works because everyone's going to be sad for you but don't do that Buy yourself a whiskey, buy yourself some champagne, toast yourself and keep it moving. That's what I kind of agree with. But anyway, that being said, my personal beliefs out of the way, we decided to go to the Hawksmoor and have a dinner. Um, it's been a while since I've been there. I first I first was uh, blessed to have dinner at Hawksmoor uh, due to a workplace I used to work at um, in the early part of my streetwear days that took me there um, for like a team bonding thing. Again, at the time, I think Hawksmoor had just launched. I think Spitfield might have been their first site. And I wasn't very familiar with Spitfields. I mean, I wasn't really familiar with Hawksmoor and what they were doing. We go in there. It's an amazing, glitzy place. Very well done. There's a front of house, something again I'm not very used to. And then we proceed to get, you know, we proceed to get, basically get all... We didn't really get a chance to order what we wanted. They, basically, the person we were with was a lot more educated and a lot more cultured than we were. So they basically ordered a bit of everything from the menu. And when it came on a on a table, you know, it couldn't have gone quicker, right? We were just like scoffing that shit up hard, from the mac and cheese to the steak to the triple cut for the triple fried chips. It just all went in. It, it went in fucking milliseconds. I just remember leaving that place thinking, oh, now I get what people make such a big deal about going to like you know really high quality steakhouses because I don't know. Sometimes I think I've mentioned previously, I'm not much of a foodie. I do enjoy eating good food but i wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say i'm a foodie i wouldn't say that i go out my way to learn or understand about different sort of coloring techniques or i'm i'm going out and seeking out the best place to get certain items i might go to the odd place here or there that's been spoken about in, in different circles or i might read a review of certain restaurant i'll go just to go check what it's like right um it's central um because a lot of people you know there's loads of good food review sites out there like cheese and biscuits that i follow you should check out um I do do that sometimes, but I'm not necessarily on the front line of the most, you know, what's happening in the culinary scene in London. So when when it happens, I tend not to I tend not to put things on pedestals. I'm not that, you know, I'm like, oh, all steak restaurants are the same, right? You don't really, it's that kind of naive uh, Neanderthal thinking of, man. But then once you go to like a really good steakhouse, especially in the UK, which is hard to come by because, you know, for the most part, you know, good quality meats here, especially priced well. Um, you know, in a decent location that isn't a, some sort of fuddy daddy place, it's hard to come by in my experience. So going to a place like the Hawksmoor where it's super relaxed, a uh, really laid back atmosphere, they don't take themselves too seriously, they just make good quality food. It's really it's um it's it's a really um it's what you call it? Um it's a real pleasure, right? You start to think, wow, this is amazing, man. I can't believe this is right around the corner from where I live, like in you know, a half an hour. I got like a, a rail line to Liverpool Street and walked up there like basically half an hour door to door. It's like it's such a it's such a blessing to have something right near your house that's of that kind of quality. And yeah, so we, we went we went there, we had a nice little sap up dinner. I have pictures on my phone, but I don't know how to get them up. So I'm just gonna show you what people have on Google Images and I'm gonna show you what I ate. So went to the Spitalfields place. Um the Spitalfields Hawks more, really good place. We ordered a T bone steak, uh seven eight hundred grams and ran out of the seven hundred and fifty. We got one portion of triple of triple fried steak chips, which they got here on the, on the screen. We also got a mac and cheese each, which went in seconds. That mac and cheese is so good, like insane. I think um we I think we realized when we were eating it that it might have some blue cheese in it. That's what probably makes a difference. That was really nice. And then you know what? As well, there was a winner that I didn't that I didn't um that I'm sure I'm sure other people have mentioned or I'm not sure if other people mentioned as well was the ketchup. The house ketchup they have in the in the, in in oh my god, I don't know if it's I don't know what they make it I don't know what they make how they make it or what's inside of it but it's incredibly tasty man. 
It's just the no ketchup they have in you know they they make um in house really really good. I really recommend you check it out. But yeah, this is the Hawks Mall. We didn't have any dessert actually because I was I was incredibly full. It was just surprising. I thought I would have had room for a little dessert, but I didn't. So we kind of skipped that. There's a burger and chips, which I've had before too. That was really nice. I have think I think I had a little quarter of somebody's burger and chips and eating it. I think it's quite nice going to a place like this together as a group of friends. Or yeah, I think a group of friends just ordering a bit of the little bits of the menu, like pieces, bit, bits and pieces, and just splitting the, the difference at the end. It works out really well. A meal for two again for me and my partner. We ended up paying about a hundred and ten pounds, I think, all in. I had a glass of wine, she had a coke, so that kind of worked out as it is. But I think if you want to go to a big group of friends, I think splitting it amongst three or more people would work out really well. Everyone eat really good food. You drink some good drinks, and it's a nice um, casual ambiance overall. Um, yeah, so this is the menu. This is again showing you the inside of it. They've got a bar downstairs too. They just, they just. I've never seen it just open, but it's um, been there for a while. I'm pretty sure I've been there before. The basement, a basement bar that's just next door to the actual place itself, and it was quite, it was quite packed on a Tuesday, a random Tuesday evening. So I'm assuming a lot of people go there for number one for meetings because there's a lot of freelancers there. Imagine being a freelancer and being able to kind of, you know, be able to expense a dinner at Hawksmoor with a client, quote unquote. Fucking cheeky cunts, man. I'd love that over here. It was super packed with uh, uh, business people, freelancers and stuff, people that look like they were from the area just having dinner or locals that come there quite often. That was cool. Oh, look at that burger with the sausage in it. What the fuck is that? Yeah, it was just full of good food, man. Yeah, so that's a T-bone steak that we got similar to this um, T-bone steak and it's already cut up for you inside the little um, cast iron skillet extremely hot so be careful again it's the meat is so good as most meat is meant to be we got a bit we got a bit worried because when we ordered the waiter told us towards the end oh do you want a sauce and i was thinking in the back of my head oh man if they ask if they're if they're telling us we want sauce i didn't know whether or not it was a an add-on sale or if it was one of those things like you know you have to have the sauce because this meat isn't that good without the sauce and you know it was like nah let's take our chances like no that's okay let's leave the sauce for now I mean, that's the sauce, but I was thinking, fuck, maybe it's one of those sauces that really complements the meat really well. And if you don't have it, the meat, it's tasty. But I know from my limited experience that the good, a good marker of a good steak or a good steakhouse is that you can eat the steak itself uh, without any kind of condiment. You don't need any sauce, any accessory, nothing on it to kind of make it to kind of make the meat come alive or to make the meat tasty. And when a skillet came, I have to admit that shit was good. Um, the only difference I'd probably make is I'd probably order it. This I don't know what um what level of rare this is on the picture here, but I'd order it here like this because we ordered it medium rare and it was good. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as buttery as I wanted it to. I wanted it just to kind of literally melt in my mouth. I don't know if that's because of the T-bone steak is that particular meat is a little bit more harder than the other bits of meat, so other parts of the body. But I think next time I would probably I'd, I'd probably I'm not sure what the level of rares are. We ordered it medium rare, right? I'm not sure what the levels are, but I'll check it in a minute. But whatever this level is here, the slightly more pink. Um, I'd probably order it that way. Um, yeah, really good stuff. The triple cut chicks is there. The cocktails look awesome. People are having, but I didn't order one. The dessert looks really good. And just in general, just an absolutely bang up place. I think next time I'd go, I'd probably do the free course meal thing and just do that way. That might be a good option. Or just do their meal of the day, whatever way. Uh, they've got Sunday roast too that they do. I'm not really the biggest fan of Sunday roast. Are you guys not the biggest Sunday roast guy? I know a lot of my friends tend to go to Sunday roast and have all that enjoyment. Maybe it's the idea of like gathering around the table with your friends is more important actually than the actual food itself. But no, no, that doesn't do it for me. But yeah, dessert looks really nice. Everything looks amazing. Great little place. I'm sure most people are aware of the Hawksmoor and what they do, or the Hawksmoor or Hawksmoor. I don't know how you say it, if it's the or no, it's just Hawksmoor. Yeah. So yeah, um, definitely recommend you check it out. Again, they've done amazingly well because they've been able to rec they've been able to replicate the same level of standards in all the other restaurants they've been to. I think all restaurants I've checked out, especially I was checking online when I was decided where I was going to book on a reservation. The reviews were all stellar, all four stars and up. Do you know what I mean, it's like, and it's quite hard to do again. I think that's why I give so much credit to people like Meat Liquor and places like Hawksmoor and places like even like Pilgrims, or whatever. Um, the more the more places you open, sometimes the quality starts to dip. I know that's true for chicken sours. You know, it wasn't necessarily it, it's the bigger it started to get, the worse the chicken started to get. And I think some restaurants have to, you know, just it's just the nature of the beast, really, isn't it? You can't necessarily ensure the standards are the same across the board. And sometimes the bigger you get, you might have to skimp and save on some of the produce that you're making that you're using. Blah 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 it happens as part of the process. But I'm really happy and glad that these guys have been able to kind of keep this level of standard going forward. But yeah, I recommend you check it out. Hawksmoor, it's in Spitalfields. They've got a few others dotted around London. Check it out. They're online. It's really easy to book a table there. 
um, via the open table. No, I think they've got it. It's, it's all built in via the website. Just go on the website and you can book a table. But it's, they use they use open table as a service. They, the open table is really good too because it reminds you um, on the day as well if you want to. Um, what was I going to say? It reminds you too before a couple of days before if you're about your booking. It reminds you if you're gonna if you're gonna cancel to cancel it now, sort of thing. Give them a heads up. Um, and I really recommend you do that too. Restaurant industry um, suffers enough as it is with having people booking in advance and not calling up when they need to cancel. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. Hawksmoor and Spitalfield, one of my favourite um, restaurants hands down in London, let alone steak restaurants. But yeah, great, great, great place. Uh